Hi, good day class. I'm Mr. Sagania Magudong and I will be your facilitator today. Again, welcome to our cookery class. Now, we will be discussing lesson 9, prepare sandwiches. Objective, at the end of the lesson, the learner can identify the different types of sandwiches and the learner can be able to demonstrate the methods of preparing sandwiches. Let's define first what is sandwich or sandwiches. Sandwiches is a food item consisting of two or more slices of bread with one or more fillings between them. Brief history of a sandwich. The first recorded sandwich was the famous Rabbi Hylel the Elder, who lived during the first century BC. He was started the Passover custom of sandwiching a mixture of chopped nuts, apples, spices, and wine between two matzah to eat with bitter herbs. The feeling between the matzah served as the reminder of the suffering of the Jews between their deliverance from Egypt and represented the mortar used by the Jews in their forced labor of constructing Egyptian buildings. During the Middle Ages, thick blocks of coarse stale bread called trenchers were used in place of plates. Meats and other foods were piled on top of the bread to be eaten with their fingers and sometimes with the aid of knives. The trenchers, thick and stale, absorbed the juices, the grease, and the sauces. At the end of the meal, one either ate the trenchers or if hunger had been satisfied, tossed the gravy, soaked bread to their dogs or given as alms to less fortunate or poor human. Alms were clothing, food, or money that is given to poor people. In the past, people thought it was their religious duty to give alms to the poor. Trenchers were clearly the forerunners of our open paste sandwiches. John Montagu, the fourth Earl of Sandwich, was a hardened gambler and usually gambled for hours at a time at this restaurant, sometimes refusing to get up even for meals. It is said that ordered his ballet to bring him meat tucked between two pieces of bread. Because Montagu also happened to be the fourth Earl of Sandwich, other began to order the same as sandwich. The original sandwich was, in fact, a piece of salt beef between two slices of toasted bread. In 1940, Louis P. Vigoy published his books, or book rather, and it's called Sandwich Manual for Professionals. His thorough approach to the assembly of sandwiches based on his work as chef at New York City famous Waldorf Astoria Hotel, included descriptions of hundreds of different sandwiches organized into specific categories. This classic work has stood the test of time. It is still a valuable resource, full of practical information and inspiration. Types of sandwiches. We have hot sandwiches and cold sandwiches. The question now is, what is the differences between cold and hot sandwiches? Hot sandwiches. It has a hot feeling such as hamburgers or pastrami or grilled sandwiches. Characteristic of hot sandwiches. Number one, 
Hot sandwiches should be served hot. Number two, they must remain hot throughout. And number three, hot sandwiches can have a hot sauce as an accompaniment. And number four, a hot sandwich can be closed or open. Next is cold sandwiches. When you say cold sandwiches, it has cold meats or veggies between two slices of breads. So in other words, it includes standard deli style versions made from sliced meats or mayonnaise dress salads. These are the examples or the types of the cold sandwiches. We have two types of cold sandwiches. First, closed cold sandwiches. When you, saw, when you say cold or closed cold sandwiches, it can be defined as those having two slices of bread or two halves of rolls which have spreads and applied are filled with the cold fillings. This can be subgrouped into three types. Number one, simple or simple sandwich. It has only one fillings and the freshest ingredient should be used. Next is combination. These have more than one primary fillings. An example of a combination sandwiches is what we call BLT or bacon, lettuce, tomato sandwiches. And then next is multi-decker. These have more than two slices of bread or a roll spit, uh, spit more than once. The other one is Number two, often cold sandwiches. These are the single slice sets of bread with attractively arranged fillings on top with the garnishes. Examples of often cold sandwiches are canapé. This is not really a sandwich, but small pieces of toast or biscuits or puff pastry sheets buttered and topped with meat fish, poultry, and vegetables. Next, buffet sandwich. It is similar to the conventional sandwich but are cut into fancy shapes. Next is conventional. Close or lunch box sandwich. It consists of two slices of bread with any filling such as meat, poultry, egg, vegetables, or cheese and cut into triangle serving bars, cafes, snack bar, and restaurants. D. Double decker, triple decker, or also known as the club sandwich. An ordinary closed sandwich with an extra layer of fillings and cover this with another slice of bread. And last is the finger and tea sandwiches. A delicate item made on fine grain bread Cream on their crust and precisely cut into shapes and sizes that can be eaten in about two average bites. Components of sandwiches. So we have four parts or structures of sandwiches. We have the bread, spread, fillings, and garnishes. Number one, bread. So the, we have various types of bread that can be used to make sandwiches, such as loop bread or pullman, quick bread, wraps, flat breads, buns, and rolls. So the type of bread has a dramatic effect on the finished fare. The quality of the bread also has a great impact on the quality and taste of the final product. Sandwich bread, also referred to as sandwich loop, is the bread that is prepared specifically to be used for the preparation of sandwiches. Number two, spread. It adds moisture, flavor, and richness to the sandwich. Plain butter, compound butter such as anchovy, tomato, mustard, onion, garlic, mayonnaise, and cheese spread. A sandwich spread is spreadable condiments used in sandwich in addition to more solid ingredients. Um, the functions or the main function of the spread is to hold the fillings and the bread together.
It also forms a protective layer on the bread and prevents it from getting soggy from the moisture in the fillings. Moreover, it adds to the taste of the sandwich and it, in the case of children, it contributes to nutritive value. Some of the examples of spreads are a plain and compound butter, mayonnaise, a low fat spread like margarine and cheese spreads. Number three, fillings. It provides the body of sandwich and most of the flavor. The purpose of the fillings is to provide the predominant flavor, moisture, the main body and the nutrients, substance and bulk and the complexity in the combinations of the flavor. Okay, so when you say fillings, it could be a variety of limitless items. Note that sometimes the fillings gives the sandwich its name. And fillings could include meat, poultry, fish, eggs, cheese, and vegetables. Salami, cooked roast chicken, or even sliced cucumber and tomatoes are also a popular fillings. The fillings could be a single item or a combination of several like ham and cheese, cucumber and chutney, bacon and tomato. So it is important that the combinations are complementary to each other. Fillings and spreads for sandwiches. Sandwich fillings. It is considered as the heart of the sandwich because it is placed between or top of the bread. We have two types of fillings. The first one, we have dry fillings. And number two, we also have the moist fillings. So what is the difference between these two fillings? First one, again, we have dry fillings. So when you say dry fillings, it refers to ingredients such as sliced cooked meat, poultry, and cheese. And then number two, we have the moist fillings. Moist fillings refers to the ingredients mixed with salad dressings or mayonnaise okay i have here an exercises let's try to identify the following ingredients so you have to identify whether it is dry fillings or moist fillings let's start number one a prawn mayonnaise is it dry fillings or moist fillings very good it is a moist fillings what about chicken and ham Yes, very good again. It's dry fillings. What about salmon and cucumber? Yes, it's dry fillings. What about peanut with ham or jam? Of course, that is moist fillings. Next is egg and bacon. Is it dry or moist fillings? Yes, that is a dry fillings. Chicken scissor. Chicken scissor, is it dry or moist? So, of course, that is a moist feeling. What about pimiento cheese? Pimiento cheese is a moist feeling. And last, we have the cream cheese with finely chopped celery and grated carrots. So, is it dry feelings or moist feelings? The answer is a moist feeling. Well done. Number four, garnishes. Some additional ingredients that can enhance the appearance and the presentations of the sandwiches. Then next is ingredients used for sandwiches. Number one, we have bread. A good quality of bread provides variety, texture, taste, bulk, nutrients, and I appeal to sandwiches. Take note that fresh bread is easier to slice or cut if it has been chilled. Then number two, we have meats. Meats can be maybe beef, pork, and sausages products like ham, roast beef, and salami. Number three, we have poultry. Our chicken or turkey breast characterized by delicate golden brown surfaces. We have number four, fish and saltfish. Some of popular seafood ingredients such as tuna, sardines, grilled and fried fish fillet, crab meats and shrimps, which are highly perishable and should be kept chilled to maintain quality. Next, number five, we have cheese. 
Most popular sandwich cheese is cheddar, or processed cheese, cream cheese, and cheese bread. Most are easily sliced, firm texture, and remain covered until ready to serve to avoid drying out. Number six is spreads, such as of course mayonnaise, mustard, and butter that moisten the bread and complements the flavors of other ingredients. So that is the end of our lesson. I just hope that you have learned something about the preparation of sandwiches. Um, for your assignment, please do have an advanced reading on our next topic, which is lesson 10, preparing dessert. And at the same time, please do prepare yourself to review about our previous lesson because we will be having a short quiz on our next meeting. Have a nice day.